We have some GTX 1080 Ti news here we just received in San Francisco, so we're off site right now. We've got the basics. I have the core specs, some of the architecture information, though it is largely the same as Pascal as you would expect because it is Pascal. Uh, so the 1080 Ti differs primarily from the 1080 non-Ti in memory and SM count. We'll go over a couple of other things in this video. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Thermal Take and their Contac 12 silent cooler, which can be had for around 25 bucks on Amazon Newegg or elsewhere. If you are interested in that, we'll have a link in the description below. So for the most immediate items of import with the 1080 Ti, we're looking at a memory configuration of 11 gigabytes total memory that is GDDR5X. So it is not HBM2, and this decision was made for a few reasons that we'll go over. G5X, it is clocked to 11 gigabits per second, making it much, uh, about a gigabit per second faster than the 1080's G5X memory. Looking at 12 billion transistors for the GPU core, and it is a 250 watt TDP, 250 amps going through there. Uh, and that amperage is delivered via a seven phase dual FET design. So the power design on uh, the GTX 1080 Ti is using two phase, two FETs per phase, which means that you are spreading out one heat. So heat spread over a larger surface area, which of course helps with reducing the heat in a specific area. And that aids in the cooler's ability to dissipate said heat. The cooler has improved, by the way, uh, according to NVIDIA, of about, uh, about, by about five degrees Celsius at 35 dBA. So that is a per noise level value. And we'll do further testing once we have the card. The air channels were cleaned. This was done in a few ways. One was removing DVI. So if you look at the back of the card, you'll notice it no longer has DVI. This reduces the amount of stuff in the way of the air, of course. Uh, but it also does mean that they are trying to account for the loss of DVI by shipping with a DP to DVI dongle. So you will have that option if you're still running DVI, dual link, or otherwise. So that has been accounted for. We don't currently have price. We'll be getting that later tonight. So if you want to know the price, hit the link in the description below for the article because I will update that immediately when we have the price. You will find that there, uh, not in this video since we're filming before price was given. Other core specs, looking at 28 SMs, I believe off the top of my head that is 35, 84 cores. It's 28 times 128 CUDA cores per SM. So that's still the same architecture, still the same SM layout, 128 times 28, somewhere around 35, 84 cores. So a bit more cores, eight total more SMs than the GTX 1080 non-TI. And other items uh, that are worth knowing include the, we've got memory capacity 11 gigabytes, speed 11 gigabits per second. Uh, also in the realm of speed, this is regarding the 1080 and 1060, not the TI, but is important to know, there will be new overclocking SKUs offered to AICs and AIB partners uh, and for the 1080 and 1060, and those SKUs are specifically for memory overclocking. This is a first for NVIDIA. That means that the, the new SKUs offered to the partners as they adopt them and start selling products will move to nine gigabit per second GDDR5 for GTX 1060 cards and will move up uh, to 11 gigabits per second for the GTX 1080s, which were previously 10 gigabits per second. That is still GDDR5X or G5X for an easier version. The price for the Founders Edition will be the same as MSRP this time. So instead of having a Founders Edition price that is special and separate from MSRP, NVIDIA is now doing both. Uh, do all MSRP is the same for everything. Founders Edition is the same as MSRP. So hopefully that reduces some of the confusion from the previous launch with the 1080. Why GDDR5X over HBM2? It's mostly because HBM2 in its current state can do about 715 megahertz uh, or so with the memory interface, it comes out to about 336 gigabytes per second. That is improving, of course. HBM2 Industries working on that. And NVIDIA does ship HBM2, just not on gaming product. G5X is ahead of where HBM2 is today in terms of memory bandwidth and raw throughput potential, uh, especially at the price. That is one of the reasons you end up even at the one gigahertz range for HBM2, still end up around 484 versus 512 gigabytes per second, and roughly the same ballpark. Uh, HBM2 is also limited on capacity, and that was a big deal for NVIDIA. They wanted to do a larger capacity moving up from the 1080, of course, so they're looking at an 11 gigabytes versus eight. Uh, and HBM2, you'd be limited to eight. 
So that covers all the news we have currently. There will be more coverage in the article linked in the description below. Uh, Founders Edition boards will still exist. They will still be called Founders Edition. They're probably using Fairchild FETs for the FETs. Still waiting to get one in hand so we can tear it down, of course, and do the full review. Check back, subscribe to make sure you get the review once we post it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus. Help us out directly. I will see you all next time.